So I'm Connor Spelsey, and I'm the founder of the Dow Research Collective. And at the Dow Research Collective, we fund, aggregate, and curate Dow Research. We're a nonprofit. We also make that research searchable, and we make it freely and publicly available to everyone forever, um, as long as we continue to exist. So please jump on and check it out. A bit of my background, um, I'm really a crypto researcher, focused on advocacy and DAOs. I've formerly started other nonprofits in the space, including the Blockchain Association and the Canadian Web3 Council. So a bit of advocacy, which also comes into play as we run the DAO Research Collective. The presentation today is about open sourcing information for the public goods. I think everyone here is probably sold on open sourcing information. So I will like skip that part in favor of just talking about what we've done on the DAO side. It's only seven minutes that we have here today. So if there are two things that you could take away from this, I'd love for you to think, um, firstly, if, if there's any way you want to be involved in what we do, please uh, come reach out to me afterwards. And if you want to start your own research collective, be it in crypto or otherwise, I'd be very happy to chat about what we've done, which is what I'm going to focus on today. So how it all started? Well, like really just all started because we realized crypto companies are spending way too much money on legal costs. And we were thinking, how can we make this more efficient? We started tweeting about it, had some phone calls, and then we formed a nonprofit. So as a former lawyer, I can let you in on a secret, which is that law firms charge crypto companies over and over again for the exact same legal advice. Now, some of you maybe have become aware of this, but a law firm will draft a memo on something like NFTs or securities, and then you as a client will approach them. They will adjust that memo 10 or 20%, and they'll sell it to you at the full price, and you'll be paying tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So obviously not really an efficient use of the community's money when we could be doing more collectively uh, to take on that advice. So in chatting with more DAO stakeholders, we realized that this phenomenon doesn't really just apply in legal, of course, right? It also applies to so many other things in DAOs, um, treasury management, community, taxation. DAOs are very much, as I'm sure you're all aware, novel forms of organization, and there's very limited precedent to allow for DAO stakeholders to know how to operate efficiently. And so those stakeholders are now taking on a lot of responsibility and researching a ton of new things all by themselves. I, I know that a lot of DAOs have a lot of money, but they have very limited resources, and time is certainly very limited resources for that group. Um, if they are doing research, that research is often siloed in that particular community. So the DAO community at large does not benefit from it. So what we are really focusing on is getting DAOs to pool that information at an early stage so as a community we can all rise up uh, much more quickly. And we can do this in one of two ways or a, comp a composition of the two ways, which is, you know, if you're a DAO or if you've done research in the space, you can open source that research now, or you can pool capital and buy research collectively, which we can open source for the community to the benefit of all of us and to the big loss of the law firms. So an easy example here, right? You have a number of DAOs that want to come together to get information, for instance, on how to pay contributors. They can go to a law firm, you know, Ave and Compound could go to a law firm separately, or they could come together, pool capital, and buy advice from that law firm. Now, there are some limitations here. Obviously, some information is very sensitive. It has to stay um, privileged and confidential, or some information has to be tailored specific to the DAO. But there is a ton of generic advice, which we are constantly buying from these organizations. And the same applies not just to law firms, but also with respect to uh, other research that we're buying really as a community. So in building the research collective, step one was really identifying the problem, right? We have a very limited amount of resources and we want to make sure that we're spending those resources on getting for the DAO community what they need most. So in the summer of 2021, we hosted a virtual DAO summit with the Stanford Center for Blockchain Research and also Bankless. And really the focus of that summit was what are the biggest issues in the space and how can we contribute to um, improving the space as much as possible with our limited resources. We then followed up on those events with an IRL event at DevConnect and then at, at the, Stanford, the Stanford Blockchain Conference as well to really um, get a list together of the things that are most important. This is a, a really a very tiny sampling of it, but um, MetaGov in particular, an organization we work with, is currently building this incredible open problems in DAO science. Um, I would guess you'd call it a paper. Um, and I'd really highly recommend you all check it out. We're helping them out with that too. Uh, step two, so you know the problems, you have to identify who is going to help you solve those problems, which is a, a much harder thing to solve for. So this is our list, a uh, great list of fellows that we have. We were lucky enough to have a very strong network 
in crypto, but we realized we don't really have much of a network outside of crypto, particularly on the academic side where we wanted to speak to a lot of experts in political science, in governance, in treasury management even, who come from different fields, but who would be really critical contributors to what we're doing in crypto. So we spent a lot of cycles reaching out to institutions. We became much closer with Stanford and others, and we now have a great group, uh, many of whom participate actively in editing and also drafting research for us. Um, eventually, we also partnered with MetaGov and Scurf, two fabulous organizations which are crypto native, but much more deeply embedded in the academic spheres than we are. So curation and distribution, kind of the, th the third step we realized, okay, well, we can fund a lot of novel research and that's great. Obviously, we have limited capacity for doing so, but there's also a lot of amazing research that's just out there already. Um, so let's not duplicate it. We realized that something we had to do was build a platform that highlighted quality research that was already out there in the community, which people could check out and make it searchable, right? So that it didn't just disappear. What happens so often in crypto is that someone will publish something amazing. They'll put it on Twitter. It'll exist in our minds um, for a couple of weeks, maybe. And then a week, you know, after that, we can't search it anymore. We don't know where it is. Someone writes the exact same article a month later and the cycle continues with a lot of duplication and a lot of waste. Um, to avoid that duplication, we set up this platform, which is searchable. We curate a, a, a list of resources that we think is really exceptional, and we've opened it up for the community. We've also written primers on kind of these core areas of functionality, like legal entity structure, advocacy, um, decentralization, etc. And it can give you a, a quick primer on the subject matter, and you can just double click to dive deeper when you want to learn something more about a particular topic. So results, um, we can, uh, yeah, so results, how do it all work out? We're happy with how it's going so far. We can always approve, of course. Like as a nonprofit, our thought is that our objective is really to help the community accelerate as quickly as possible. And so in order to do that, we obviously need to be interfacing with the community a lot to get a sense of what are the biggest problems for the community. And so we had an anonymous survey done fairly recently, um, and the results were a bit surprising. You know, people. The second most common reason people use the DAO Research Collective was for research, was to avoid duplication of their own research when they were starting and looking into a new area that they hadn't previously focused on. But the, uh, the, the most common reason they'd use it would actually be to find subject matter experts in particular fields. So we appreciate there's a huge talent issue in DAOs where we are doing things like setting up very complex governance systems often without any governance experts at the DAO, right? It could just be a collection of people, of operators, of developers who've done some research on governance, but they won't give you, for instance, as good of advice as Andy Hall, who's a professor at Stanford in governance um, and political science, who'll just have a bit of a better sense of it. So we see that as a huge need and something we're gonna need to focus on going forward while also continuing to build out the platform. And that's it. So if you do have any questions about what we do, or if you'd like to contribute your research, or if you'd like to set up your own research collective, crypto or otherwise, I'm super happy to chat about it. So have a great conference and uh, thanks for coming everyone.